Hey, it's Professor Dave. Let's learn about electric potential. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. We now know about the electric force and the electric fields that propagate this force. So how is this useful to humans? To answer this, we must understand that just as there is gravitational potential energy by virtue of an object's position in a gravitational field, there is also electrical potential energy by virtue of an object's position in an electric field, and charged particles can flow and generate current just like water in a river can flow and generate its own kind of current. Oppositely charged particles, because of their charge, have the potential to accelerate towards each other just like an object on the edge of a cliff has the potential to accelerate towards the earth because of its mass. And in each case, it is the field that does the work to produce the acceleration. As charged particles move within an electric field, their electrical potential energy changes. For a uniform field, the magnitude of this change is equal to the opposite of the object's charge times the electric field strength times its displacement from the reference point in the direction of the field. This leads to the concept of potential difference, which is the difference in electric potential between two points in an electric field, expressed as the change in electrical potential energy over electrical charge. The SI unit for potential difference is the volt, which is equivalent to one joule per coulomb. This means that as a one coulomb charge moves through a potential difference of one volt, it gains one joule of energy. The potential difference for the two terminals of a common battery is anywhere from about 1.5 volts for small batteries to around 12 for a car battery. Batteries do work to move charges, so volts are not a measure of energy. They are a measure of change in energy per unit charge. As charge flows, it produces usable energy, like the way that flowing water can push a water wheel as it moves past. In this way, we can discuss electric current, and our ability to manipulate this current is responsible for our mastery of electrical power. A current exists whenever there is a net movement of electric charge through a medium. This can be defined as the total charge passing through a given area divided by the time interval. The SI unit for current is the ampere, which is equal to one coulomb of charge passing a particular cross-sectional area per second. The direction of the current is always opposite the movement of negative charges, but a current can be generated by particles of either charge. Most materials that are conductors of electricity are metals that allow for the free movement of electrons from atom to atom or electrolytic solutions with charged ions in solution. The ability of a material to oppose the motion of charge is called resistance, which will be unique to a substance and vary by the dimensions of the material. This is the ratio of potential difference to current measured in ohms, which are represented by the Greek letter omega. These are equal to one volt per ampere. Electric power, which is the rate at which charge carriers convert electrical potential energy to other forms of energy, is given by current times potential difference, which is measured in watts, or joules per second. An incredible amount of technology has been developed to utilize all these phenomena in the form of circuitry, particularly in computing, which becomes more sophisticated every year but an in-depth analysis of circuits will have to wait for an engineering course sometime in the future. For now, let's quickly list a summary of the new units we have just defined, as they can get a little confusing. With all of that in order, let's check comprehension.
Thanks for watching guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com. Thank you.